Okay, so limits of trigonometric functions. No worksheet, this is on paper. <clears throat> Continued. So basically we're just going to do a dozen examples or so, and the idea is we're looking for certain patterns, right? So we're looking at that at x minus 8 and saying, well, if I had to, I could factor that as a difference of cubes, and I want to because on the bottom I happen to notice I have a cube root of x minus 2, so that then I know that I'll be able to cancel those. <clears throat> and the idea here is we're just going to look at a whole pile of examples, so you can look at it and say, hey, if I write it this way, then I know it becomes such and such a thing, and I can work from there. So we did a bunch yesterday, or a number of them, so we're going to, let's see, it says start here Thursday, February 6th. So this will be number six, I guess, right? The limit. As x approaches 0 of the sine of x, over 5x. So we can, <clears throat> I guess, I don't know, I'll go, I'll go across and down and in and out. Biggest thing to remember is, what's the next thing that I write? All right, the word limit again, and then x approaches 0, right? When does that come off? Okay, when I'm ready to substitute in, right? So if I substitute in now, we get sine of 0 over 0. The sine of 0 is 0. We get 0 over 0. We know there's a limit, but we know we can't do that. We have to do something to get this thing in a different form. So what we can do is to say, well, I can write it like this. Then. The limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over x times 1 fifth. Okay. So what I'm doing is splitting it up into a product because we already know from yesterday the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, right? which you might not remember, but if somewhere in your notes you have the previous example, because that's the last example we did, right? and that's the one that's proved on page 303 um, in the textbook, and you can find many proofs online as well if you want to of that particular thing. And so and we can go here, right, because we got these properties of limits as listed in our book on whatever page that happens to be, 13, 26, whatever. And we can say, well, so what have we got? Well, we had this, and we've moved the C outside so it can actually come in front. So it's one-fifth times, okay, so that's equal to the limit as X, or sorry, it's equal to... One-fifth times, so we're just taking the constant out in front of the limit. So one-fifth times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, which is equal to one-fifth times 1. Okay, so this is the biggie, right? It's one of the biggies. You need to know this. Limit as, limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is equal to 1. So it's one-fifth times 1, or one-fifth. Okay, so that's that for that. At any point you have any questions like, what, how did you do that or something, then please ask. You're like, why did you split that up? Or... Okay, so the technique, and we're going to use this technique a lot, right, is just to kind of split this up, to split up something and write it as a product. Because then we can take the limit. We know that the limit of a product is... Here's the product. The limit of a product is the li individual limits, right? It's the product of the individual limits, okay? So we're going to be using these properties. Okay, next. Everybody good? Sort of scroll this off. <clears throat> well, if you were late. Okay, remember if you miss anything, right, this will all be saved, it'll be stuck up as a PDF, and I'm recording it, I think. Yeah, I can see the little bar moving. 
So then this will be up uh, also as a, as a video. So the limit, you know, so if you miss class, you know, if you had a dentist poem or something, then you're... Okay, so what are we going to do with this case? And this is going to come up a bunch. If the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 5x over x. So you say, well, if only that were like sine of 5x over 5x, then that would be just like the one we did, right? Because we know the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. Well, OK, so why don't we just do that then? Why don't we write it as? The limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 5x over 5x. But these two things aren't quite equal, right? Because well, I just divided that by 5, right? So let's multiply, let's multiply by 5 over 1. So what I did really was multiply that by 1 over 5. So then let's multiply it by 5 over 1. So the 5's cancel, we're back at the beginning, right? So we just multiply the top and bottom by 5, right? But now, what do we got? Hey, these two guys are the same. Now if only this could be the same as these two things, then we're looking at something of the form that we looked at yesterday. The limit as x approaches 0, sine x over x. <clears throat> well, so what happens to 5x as x approaches 0? So as x approaches 0, what does 5x do? It approaches 0. It actually gets there faster. Right? So then we should just be able to write this as the limit as 5x approaches 0. Oh, hang on a sec. <coughs> we can pull the constant out, right? So we can write it as 5 over 1, just 5. You could just put a 5 there, right? The limit as 5x approaches 0 of sine of 5x over 5x. So if these guys are the same, then what is this limit? 1. So what's the name? Equal to 5. Okay, so that's 5 times 1, which is 5. Okay, it'll be time to absorb the wonderfulness of that. So we're actually going to do a ton of stuff like this, right? Or you're going to do a ton of stuff like this when you do the... Uh... So the thing you're looking at is this. If I get something that's kind of of that form, can I write it in the form of the limit as... Here, let's... Can I write it in this form... So let's say that's the limit okay so if I can write it in this form then I know that that's equal to 1 right so you're looking at how do I change it to that form so we've done that two different ways here right we said well I've got the 5x here I got to get rid of the 5 so we just split it out as a product. So this is 1 fifth. And here, I got a 5x here, so I want to make that a 5x. How do I do that? Multiply this by 5. You can't just do that. Sorry, there's no you can't just do that video. So you got to multiply top and bottom by 5. And then away we go. New page. <coughs> Number 8. The limits. The sine of 5x Okay, so the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 5x over the sine of 7x. So if only we could write that as the sine of 5x over 5x. Okay. 
And then what are we going to do to the bottom? Well, I'm going to multiply the top by 5x over 5x. What's 5x over 5x? 1. So we're not really changing it, right? I'm going to multiply the bottom by 7x over 7x, which is also 1. So we're not, we haven't changed anything. We haven't changed its value, but we have changed its form a little bit. Um, we do have x's top and bottom, so these guys will cancel, right? Good next, good next. Okay, get rid of them. We got a 5 over 7. That's kind of a constant. So constants, they can go out front, right? I got a quotient. So okay, quotient, quotient. Mm, so this leg, okay, that can be written as individual limits then, right? So equals. So we got our five sevenths. So now we're gonna take the limit of the top. So we're gonna say the limit. Now, if I can write x approaches 0, I can also write 5x approaches 0, right? Of the sine of 5x over 5x. Had that discussion this very morning. Does it matter? Like, I mean, if x approaches 0, then we know that 5x approaches 0. I think it doesn't change the equation. No. And, and it was told to me by someone far wiser than I that it was me. You, 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 want, you want to write it that way because later on it's going to come in handy to have been written that way. So, so I'm going to say, okay, you know what? But I've seen it in other books and stuff where they'll just write X approaches or right? They just say, hey, okay, it doesn't matter. But here's what we're doing, really is we're matching these three things up so that we know if this, this, and this are the same, <coughs> this, 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 then we know that limit is 1. Okay? So if all three match. So for the for matching purposes, it's good to put a 5x there, it's good to put a 7x there, right? Because then we just look at that and say, hey, that's 1, and that's 1, and so that's 1. And so the limit is one. times which so the limit is five over seven, right? Okay, here, let's times one over one. I still have room. Okay, so the five over seven is the five over seven. This is one. So this is this. This is this, and this is this. Right. So we're rewriting, right? So this is something that, you know, I guess it's not on your formula sheet. Limit of state approaches zero sine theta over theta equals one. Something you're going to know, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Later. But like, do we have them with like all those properties that you put on like when you look when you went? No. Uh, not properties, no. Those you just got to know. But they're almost intuitive, right? It's just like the, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits, and the product is the product, and the quotient is the quotient, and you know. Isn't, so isn't sine x over x equals one? Isn't that on the formula? Nope. Let me look again. Hmm. Still no. Didn't it didn't match? No. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you're gonna get this later today, if I remember. You can remind me. Um, but I'm not gonna give it to you right now because I want to see if you remember any of your trick stuff. Oh wait, you know what? The limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x equals one is on the formula sheet. That's how important it is. All right, still you should know it anyways. All right, it, it did. It, it appeared well while I wasn't looking. Uh, so we look at that and we say, well, the tan of 4x as x approaches 0 would be the tan of 0, which is 0, and 2 at times x as x approaches 0 is 0, so we have a 0 over 0 form. 
right? Because what's the first thing we always try, right? We're just going to try substituting. Substitute in. Maybe it just works, right? You can answer it. That's it. All right, so we can't leave it like that. What can we do? What's tan defined as? Sine over cos. So we can write limit. Don't forget the limit. It would be like forgetting a radical sign if there's a radical sign. I know I could write that radical sign. I mean, because we still, we haven't done this. You can't drop that limit until the last, second last line, which is that we put the number in and then you equals an answer. Okay? So remember that. So it's sine x over cos x over 2x. Oh, sorry. It's sine of 4x. Sine of 4x over cos of 4x over 2x. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to do this once, and then after that, I'm just going to do. So that means limit. Gentlemen, if you feel the need to talk, please wander down to the vicinity of the elevator and talk to your heart's content. Please piss off uh, Ritalik and kick you out somewhere. Now Ritalik's my boy then. <laughs> okay, excellent. Then why don't you head down there and talk? Okay. So that's really, so what I'm writing on this line we will never write again. Okay. But we're just gonna see, okay. now, so this line doesn't exist. All right, so all I'm going to do is go from here to here to here, right? And that, that's why, right? So just everything ends up in the denominator. Everything in the denominator ends up down there. That This is why, okay, we are dividing it by 2x, which is the same as multiplying it by 1 over 2x, and so in future, we're going to go from something like this straight to this line here. That's why. So I'm not going to do this ever again. But in, why is it sine of 4x over cos of 2x? It's I don't know. It's 4x. Yeah. It's not. Now you can talk. Yeah, otherwise. All right, so now we're here. And, and this will never be done again. I'm, not, but just, I'm just going to go straight from like this to here we go. Okay, because you're going to see a lot of stuff like that. Uh, all right, so what do we got to do here? Well, I mean, we can put zeros in, but we'll still get a zero and a zero. So nope, we got to we got to mess around a bit. Uh, so if only what? If only this sine four x was over four x, then we know how to handle that, right? Okay, so how do we get it over 4x? Well, let's multiply it by 4x over 4x. What's the cosine of 0? That's going to 0. What's cos 0? 1. Okay, so cos 0 is cool, right? It's just get rid of that 2x on the bottom. Okay. So, um... That can give us. So this x here is going to take out this x here, right? This 4 and this 2. Don't mess with this. We need this, right? You could sit and cancel this, but that'd be sort of like, hey, look, I just canceled out what I multiplied it by to change its form, and uh, now I'm back at the original. That's not good. So this 2 goes into here, 2, right? So up top, so what do we got? We got the limit <coughs> as x approaches 0 of sine 4x over 4x, right? So I'm just going to put these two guys together. I'll put these two guys together. Times 2 over cos 4x. Right? So all we're doing is just rearranging the deck chairs on the, 
But we're writing it so that, hey, because we can do something with that, right? And this, that has a value. We can substitute into that. So what's that equal to? We got the 2. We can pull the 2 out. We've got the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 4x over 4x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cos 4x. Squeezing. Okay. So the 2 is a constant. That came out. And then we have the limit of a product. Right? Limit of a product is the product of the limits. Okay, so now we've got the product of the limits. What's this? One. Right. So that we have, what do we got now? Two times one. And what's this? To put a zero in here, the cos of four times zero, which is the cos of zero, which is one, one over one is one, two times one times one is two. Okay, so that limit is two. Make sense? Not yet. You might have to look it over, right? So you may have to look some of these over and just sort of say what's going on here, what, what are we doing, and just, you know, it's like rearranging things. And the idea is remembering, hey, if I can get sine 4x over 4x, then I know that's it. Right? So actually here, let's put a little 4 in front of there, right? Go limit as 4x approaches 0, so that these guys all match. And we just take it to 1. Okay. Uh, two, but I don't know if this is a bad question or not, but how do you know to take it? Like, how can you take a 2 out of sine 4x4 and stay sine 4x4? Uh, the 2 is this 2. Yeah, so it doesn't, like, it doesn't affect the other one? <clears throat> no. I mean, I could have left the 2 here and just done this limit with the 2 over 1 and just said 2. You know, that's a constant. And cos of, <coughs> cos of anything x is 1? Cos of 0 is 1. So as x approaches 0, so, you know, I suppose technically let's put a 4 there as well. So as x approaches 0, so does 4x. So the limit is 4x approaches 0 of 1 over cos 4x is 1 over 1, which is 1. Okay. So that's the two, you, that's the one. If you had left the two over there, it would have been one times <laughs> Yeah, then this would have been that, that would have been a two over one, but one times two. Okay. Okay? Sure. So, yeah, you didn't need to pull the two out, but you can. Okay, so let's continue. <clears throat> what is this? Number 10. The limit. Okay, this is an important one. Of uh, cos x minus 1. Okay, so let's do just substitution. What's the cos of 0? 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and on the bottom we got a 0. So it's 0 over 0. So we know it has a limit. We just know that we've got to change it so that it... Okay, so we say, well, what can we possibly do to this? What can we possibly do? Well, so we're going to multiply by the conjugate. That's going to give us cos squared minus 1. Now, cos squared minus 1, we start to get into the Pythagorean identities from trig, right? So we'll just sort of see where this leads us. OK, so limit. So this will be cos squared x minus 1 over x times cos x plus 1. Right. So the top being a difference of squares, right? This gives us cos squared x minus 1. And now, do you guys do a lot of trig identities in 3 Yeah? Okay, good. So then you're used to such trickery. Okay. 
So what's 1? Well, sine squared x plus cos squared x is 1, right? So we're going to replace this with cos squared x plus sine squared x. I mean, ultimately, our goal is to get rid of that x on the bottom, right? Because the x on the bottom will be a 0, and you got a problem. You can't divide by 0. OK, so what does the top simplify to? Are you positive? Negative sine squared x. Positive. <laughs> positive. Okay, so we got a negative sine squared x. <clears throat> oh, if only we had a sine x over x, right? He says pointing. For those of you watching on video, he says pointing to the board with the limit of sine. You know, so if we could write sine x, well, why can't we? So let's split this up. So let's go sine x over x times, well, it's really minus sine squared x, right? So there's my minus sine squared x, right? And it's really x times, well, that's fine. So let's just put the cos x plus 1 down here. It's such trickery. Right? I mean, that's equal. It's just sort of, it's kind of factoring it, I guess, really. It's right? just writing it as a product. But it's special because, hey, what's that? Or what's this? That's 1, right? So now we just write it, well, the limit of a product is the product of the individual limits right? And that's not 0, so that's good, right? Because we can do that. So this is 1. And what's that? Well, let's, let's do detail. Details, details. So times negative sine 0 over cos 0 <coughs> plus 1. Extend page. <clears throat> so what's what's sine zero? So what's negative sine zero? Zero. What's cos zero? One. What's one plus one? Two. So we get one times zero over two, which is zero. Okay. It's on your formula sheet. This one. I can see it here. Limit is limit is x approaches zero. Cos x minus one over x equals zero. <clears throat> so. Again, that's how important it is, right? There's two of them that are on your formula sheet. And this is the second one, right? So what was it? Limit of cos of x minus 1. So that's an important one. <coughs> and so also, so let's just say, so also, uh, then it is also true that the limit as x approaches 0 okay so if cos x minus 1 over x the limit as x approaches 0 that is 0 then so is the limit as x approaches 0 1 minus <coughs> cos x over x right I mean they're the same okay so also. It's not on your formula sheet, but if you end up with something in that form, either cos x minus 1 over x or 1 minus cos x over x, then you'll know what to do. Okay. Why is that staying? Why is it actually going to kill this? Okay, next. Number 11. The limit is x approaches 0. Secant x minus 1 over x. OK, what's secant? 
One over cos. So that's really about all we can do. I mean, well, I suppose you can multiply by sec x plus 1. That'd give you secant squared minus 1. Is that one of those trig things? That'd be 10 squared. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> there's more than one way to approach this, but we're going to do this approach. So, I mean, you could also do it as like uh, seek x plus 1 over seek x plus 1. I don't know if that would help, though, because you still have a secant in there. And... So let's do this. Okay, so common denominator will be cos x. So the top is going to become 1 minus cos x over cos x. Right? That's just this. Okay, I haven't done the x yet. But I just want you to look at that and say, yeah, okay, I see how you did that. So when I add or subtract fractions like that, I'm not going to go into big detail on how it's done. It's just, there it is, and I believe it's actually correct. All right, and that x is in the denominator, so let's just throw it down there. So it's just x plus x. That's that. One step, no more big details. If you'd like, you can come and sit up with me afterwards and I'll show it to you in five lines. But it'll still work out to this. All right, so what are we going to do with that? Well, I got a 1 minus cos x, right, which is kind of like that. Remember the, the corollary. So the one that goes with that, which is not on your formula sheet, which is this. So I do have a 1 minus cos x and an x. So we can write this. We do limit as x approaches 0. 1 minus cos x over x times what? No, I'm thinking that I'm kind of missing a cos x from the bottom, right? So I'm going to have to put a cos x down here. So that will give me the x cos x. What goes up here? Just one, right? So I get the one minus cos x. Okay. So the thing is, because we know this, or this, then we know this, and this is on our formula sheet. So we write this, and this cos x is fine, right? As x approaches zero, cos x, the number is just one. So now we can write it as individual limits, right? The product of one minus cos x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cos x, which is, what's this? It's on your formula sheet. 0. <coughs> what's this? doesn't really matter, but it does exist. So what matters is that this exists. And that's 0. So 0 times something that exists is 0. Not that this doesn't exist, right? So because x approaches 0, cos x is 1, 1 over 1 is 1, 0 times 1 is 0. So that whole thing is all just 0. It's nothing. All right, only one, two, three, five. Only five more to go. The more you see, the more you know. Don't you watch like NBC? I'm pretty sure they do those things. The more you know, or is it the more you know? Whatever. The more you see, the less you know. <laughs> the more I see, the worse it gets. You'll look back on these. So limit as x approaches zero. All right, so we try substituting a 0 in there. We get 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 over 0. So there is a limit, but we can't have sine x sitting on the bottom because it will evaluate to 0, and we're not allowed to do that, right? Sorry. And so what are we going to do with this? Well, if only I could write sine x over x, because I know the limit of sine x over x. So how are we going to do that? Well, we'll just divide the bottom by x. Cool. 
Cool, huh? Oh, but then what do I have to do to the top? I got to divide it by x as well. Oh, wait a sec. Hmm. Look, there they are. They're both there. So that's the limit as x approaches 0 of, where am I here? Mm, it's like the same thing is written twice. So like on a test, when you get that step, did you just, did you just write 0 or 1 equals 0? Yeah, I suppose. You know, technically, I guess we should write the limit of the quotient as the quotient, because these guys we know, right? Like, you can point to a formula sheet and say, hey, this one, that's 0, and that's 1, and so we get 0 over 1, which is just 0. Looking at that, we know that. Okay, So if it's multiple choice, then you're just going to choose 0 as the answer and, and circle at this. Really, we should break this out, right? So yeah, we the limit of a quotient. That's the uh, quotient of the individual limits. Which is one divided, oops, sorry, zero divided by one, which is zero. Okay. And again, there's other ways to do this, right? So you're not necessarily limited. You're not limited to one way of doing things. Limited, you say. There are no limits. Well, okay. There are limits. But. Next, <clears throat> limit as x approaches 0. Okay. Do you remember about sine 2x? So what's the sine of 2x equal to? It's okay, you're gonna get a formula sheet, but do you remember? Okay, I mean, some of you have been a year, so yeah, it's like, really? No, I don't remember. Okay, so sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x, right? What are the double angle identities? It's okay, because we give you trig identities on this sheet. Okay, what might you want to do now? Let me say I might want to... You might want to factor out a 2 sine x, right? I got a 2 sine x in common. If I factor that out... So let's try that. It's like doing trig ideas, right? When you do trig ideas, where you, you try stuff and you say, well, where will this lead? So let's try stuff. So we get 2 sine x, that's my common factor, 1 minus cos x. And you say, well, look at that. I mean, I can pull the 2 out as a constant and stick it in front. And then I can write that as the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. And I got a 1 minus cos x over x. So let's do that. Be explicit. It's all going to lead to nothing anyways. But. Oh, wait. Hang on. What did you write? Sine x over x. Yeah, yeah, got that right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, that's not that, but it's okay. We, we can do that. All right, so we have the limit of a product. So that becomes the product of the individual limits. Well, 
I thought that was, was that, but it's not. But it's okay, because cos x is defined at zero, right? So, so this is something we can just substitute into. There's no, no dividing by zero anymore. So we know this is one, right? So that's equal to two times one <clears throat> times, okay, what's one minus cos x? What's one minus cos zero? Zero. zero. Okay, so I, I could write that out. So 1 minus cos 0 over cos 0. Damn, 0, not theta. Equals 2 times 1 times uh, 0 over 1, or just 0. So if I remember the, the uh, timeline, which I've given all away, I think tomorrow's work period on this stuff, right? So like the rest the rest of this period will be done in whatever. CTU. CTU. Yeah. You know what? I, I find it cuts through the noise, so you can actually hear it decently. It's really sick. It's actually... Can you find me the CT ringtone? I'm pretty sure I can. I thought, you know, I think that'll be cool. I'll put it on my. <laughs> ah, more trickery ahead. Oh my god. Okay, so here we go. The limit as x approaches 3 pi over 2, no more 0, of the cos of x over x minus 3 pi over 2. Except the cos of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and x minus, you know, 3 pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 2 is 0. So direct substitution yields 0 over 0, which says you can't do that, but we can do stuff. So we're going to say, all right, here's what we're going to say. We are going to replace the x minus 3 pi over 2 by t. Yeah, I'm talking. You want to talk? Come t. All right, whoever. Make your choice. One of us can talk. The rest of us can. If you want to talk, you might guess. Come up here and do this. If you don't, Okay, so what's x equal to then? Rearrange. It's like grade 9 stuff. x equals t plus 3 pi over 2. I'm going to get rid of the x by itself. You're trying to come soon enough. We've got like three more of these, and I'm done. I have at least half now, at least half an hour, and then an entire class tomorrow. Okay, so then we say, well, what's going to happen as x approaches 3 pi over 2? Look up here. As x approaches 3 pi over 2, then t is going to do what? So as x approaches 3 pi over 2, t approaches 0. So here's what we're going to say. This will become the limit as t approaches 0. Right? So x is 3 pi over 2. Well, that means that t approaches 0. Of what? Well, of the cos. What's x? Oh, x is t plus 3 pi over 2. And what's x minus 3 pi? Well, that's just t. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to look at that, because you got to look at that and say, what? We're doing all these substitutions here. And you need to make sure that, yeah, okay, what you just wrote is consistent with what's above it. With an equal sign to show that it is consistent. So this is like, uh, like, like cos A plus B, right? The cos of A plus B. Which goes, how's cos A plus B go? Is that the one that goes like cos A cos B minus 
Sign A, sign B, or sign B, sign B. Okay. Well, we have sheets that have that on them. Okay. So don't worry. And you know what? Use them because you don't remember stuff that you think you do. I sure as heck don't remember this stuff. So you know, you're going to think you remember some formula, just write it out, and it turns out to be the wrong formula. And then four pages later of work, you either come to the realization that you just wasted half the test time doing something that you thought you knew the formula to and didn't. So use the formula sheet. Write it down. OK, so I'm going to use the formula sheet. So it's the limit as t approaches 0 of, OK, so this goes cos t cos 3 pi over 2. And then since it's a plus, then it's minus sine t sine 3 pi over 2 all over t. I'm not going to put the formula sheet away now. I've used the formula appropriately. Now, the cos of 3 pi over 2 actually has a value, right? And so does the sine of 3 pi over 2. So what is the cos of 3 pi over 2? Zero. So the limit as t approaches zero. So this whole thing becomes zero. What's the sine of 3 pi over 2? One. Are you positive? Negative one. OK. So what does this top expression become? So we got zero minus negative sine t, which is? Zero plus sine t. Are you sure? So is it. Sine t. Over t. Oh, goodness. What's that limit? On your formula sheet. It's 1. Mm. 1. For the 1. OK, two more. Oh, how'd that happen? <laughs> Oh, you can look at it on paper. Do you have it written down? OK. Good. Let's do the two more. I'm happy to go through any of these with you, or I mean, you can ask the people around you say, explain this to me. What's going on here? So let's do another one along the same lines. All right, so we are going to say this. We're going to say, I don't want to have pi minus x, so we're going to let t. Be pi minus x. Which means that x is equal to what? Pi minus t, right? The x goes over here, the t goes over there. So pi minus t. So what happens as x approaches pi? Then pi minus, getting really close to pi, as, as that makes a lot of sense. As x approaches pi, t approaches 0, right? I mean, you're making this get pi minus pi is 0. Okay, so t approaches 0. All right, so let's rewrite this. So as x approaches pi, means t approaches 0. The sine of x, well, x is pi minus t, so that's pi minus t. And pi minus x is t, so there we go. So this is, this is the trickery we use for this question. In other words, when we've got these things like x approaches pi or x approaches 3 pi over 2, we don't want that. So instead, we let t equal that, rearrange it to get x, and then say, well, as x approaches pi or whatever value, then t will approach 0. And we end up with one of these limit forms. So we want to change it so it becomes the limit as something approaches 0. Well, this is sine of a minus b, right? And that is sine a cos b. So equals. So sine a, sine pi, cos t, and the sines stay the same, minus cos pi, sine t, over t. OK, 
And sine of pi and cos of pi have values, right? So what's sine pi? Zero. So what's cos pi? Negative one. Okay, so then this is gone. We've got minus negative sine t. So what are we going to write? Sine t. So what's that equal to? One. One and done. One. One. One and done. One to go. Okay, so just for fun. Ready. One more. <laughs> yeah. We have our identity sheets now. What? Now, this is just a factory and difference of cubes, so you need practice with that. The limit. We'll just go back to uh, x approaches zero. Sine squared x. Here we go. So what are we going to do? Well, it's a difference of cubes. We're going to factor it. So go forth and factor. You should be able to factor. Go factor the top. You should be able to do that. Don't write anything below yet. Just factor the top. Factors are factoring a difference of cubes. I'll start. We got all these cosines, but I've got this sine squared, so what's sine squared equal to? 1 minus cos squared. What are we going to do with 1 minus cos squared? We're going to factor it. And then what's going to happen? Well, the 1 minus cos x is going to cancel. And then what happens? Well, it's OK, because x approaches 0, and cos of 0 is defined. So everything is defined. So you finish it. You can do it. Oh, wait, now I'm channeling what's his name from Stand and Deliver. Which was about calculus, though. You can do it. We'll watch that. <laughs> oh, the guy was saying, what's this, what's this calculus? <laughs> That's my favorite one. What's this calculus? <laughs> That's one and that's one. It's one plus one plus one over one plus one. Right. Cos zero is defined, right? So getting everything in terms of cos. Yeah. So do I. I can't write a zero. It's trig. I can't write cos zero. It's gonna be cos theta. I've erased theta. I don't know how many times. All right, it's done. So, see, you got a half hour now. So, here, let me just turn this off.